Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Marianne Abrahamson, Planning Commission staff. I've been working on the RP2 land use study alongside Jay Collins of the Planning Commission and Jared Schneider of Kimley Horn, our study consultant, who are both with us today as well. This study commenced in early 2020, and since then we have held numerous meetings with community members and other stakeholders, county staff, and have provided presentations to our elected officials of the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. The last time we held a community open house was in November. We offered both a virtual and in-person open house in the same week to provide options for how people were most comfortable participating. Since then, we have had workshops with our elected officials and have taken into account their feedback as we continue to refine the proposed policies. Today, we'll go over high-level changes to the policies that have occurred since November. We'll then talk through some next steps and options for how to remain involved. And after that, we'll open it uh, up for a Q&A. So feel free at any time during the presentation to type your question or comment into the chat box at the bottom of your screen. When the Q&A portion arrives, we will read out the questions for us to answer and then move on to those who have their hands raised to speak. I'll repeat this as a reminder after my presentation. Here we have a map of the study area. I'm sure many of you have seen this before. Um, for those who have not or who might need a refresher, the pink area is the area currently subject to the moratorium and which we are referring to as the Bomb Village Plan Area. The purple dashed line represents the Bomb Community Plan Boundary. And the yellow area is what we are referring to as the North Village Plan Area. Um, all of the RP2 study areas outside of the urban service area, which is represented by the dark blue line. As mentioned earlier, there have been a few events held since the November open houses. Here is a list of the events and corresponding dates for your reference. You can see that we've had two Board of County Commissioner workshops and one Planning Commission workshop, which, was, uh, which has helped to guide some of the changes that we'll go into next. Just as a reminder, I will not be covering every policy uh, or element of the proposed regulations today. I will only be covering the major changes that have occurred since the November open house. The full drafts are available on the project webpage for your reference. So the first change I'll talk about is density. Uh, since November, there has been no change in the proposed density structure for the Bomb Village plan area. However, in the North Village plan area, the previously proposed density was one dwelling unit per five acres for any property, five acres or less, with the possibility to achieve up to three dwelling units per acre on properties greater than five acres if they use the various community benefit options, which are designed to provide improvements above and beyond what is required in the code. The uh, proposed density structure in the North Village plan area is now one dwelling unit per five acres on properties less than 50 acres and up to two dwelling units per one acre on properties of 50 acres or greater when using uh, the community benefit options. We've also included an aggregation component in this area. So properties may join together if they meet the aggregation requirements to reach 50 acres. For those that were tuning in to the December 16th BOCC hearing, uh, Commissioner Kemp motioned for staff to collaborate on how to look to remove the wetland density credit from the rural service area. So the motion that was passed, or excuse me, the motion was passed that day. Uh, so that will be an effort separate from the study as the boundaries of the rural service area expand beyond RP2. However, in order to avoid a gap in between the time in which the wetland density credit is removed from the rural service area, and when the RP2 amendment is adopted, we've added language to the policies which explicitly state that wetland density credits are not permitted in RP2. So in our previous drafts, we had not included language pertaining to Vision Zero, which as you can see defined here at the bottom of the slide is a transportation safety strategy which aims to achieve zero traffic fatalities through a variety of safety implementation techniques, which include things like speed limit reductions, buffered or painted bike lanes, and uh, street design. We've now included a policy speaking to Vision Zero in RP2. 
Another change under this policy of community connectivity is the issue of gated communities. So we previously proposed that gated subdivisions not be permitted in efforts to avoid the standalone subdivisions and to increase transportation connectivity throughout communities. So we heard some concerns regarding limiting personal, personal property rights, um, excuse me, personal property protection rights. So we've amended the policy to allow gates internal to the subdivision, as long as the gate is not abutting a main road and as long as it doesn't restrict transportation connectivity. Regarding transportation, here we have an update to one of the sections of the land development code. So I've been covering changes to the future land use policies today, rather than the details of the land development code, because the majority of the changes in the code have been made to ensure consistency with the land use policies. However, I feel like this one is worthwhile presenting today. So our previously proposed language on transportation design exceptions stated that they were discouraged. So in efforts to add more teeth, if you will, and taking into account VOCC feedback and input from county staff, we've amended the language to state that providing right-of-way is available, no design exceptions will be permitted. And here we have two new policies that have been added since the November open house. The first is regarding residential support uses such as daycare centers. Uh, these uses, if on land under three acres, shall not be subtracted from residential density calculations and efforts to encourage such uses. Another policy pertains to agriculture and states that 50% of the planned village open space requirement may be satisfied by agricultural uses, and it goes on to provide examples of such uses like co-op farming and agri-heads. And we define agri-heads here uh, as organized, uh, an organized community that integrates agriculture into a residential neighborhood. So there we have the major changes that have occurred to the RP2 future land use policies since the November open house. We've also worked on refining the land development code to be consistent with these changes and to ensure that the regulations are implementable by county staff. So as mentioned, the full proposed uh, drafts are available on our project webpage. Here is the upcoming schedule for public meetings pertaining to the RP2 amendments. We have a planning commission public hearing on February 1st, a board of county commissioners public hearing on February 4th, with a projected adoption date on March 25th. And the moratorium end date is May 31st. So there are a few ways for you to remain engaged to list it here. You can contact your commissioner ahead of the public hearing and voice any comments you may have. Uh, we've also added a new comment section up on the project webpage. This is located at the very top of the page, so it's the first thing you see. You can leave uh, a voicemail with your comment at the number here. It's 813-272-5940 and choose option 9. The voicemail will be transcribed and submitted as public comment on these items, um, unless you indicate that you prefer not to have it transcribed or you can call or email me directly using my contact info listed on the slide. You can also sign up to speak at the public hearings on February 1st and February 4th by navigating to the calendar on hillsboroughcounty.org and clicking on the uh, calendar button here, circled in red. And then you can navigate to the correct date. So February 1st for the Planning Commission hearing and February 4th for the BOCC. And then once you select the correct meeting um, on those dates, you can then navigate to the speak at the public hearing button and submit your request. So thank you again for being here and tuning into the updates. As mentioned at the beginning of the meeting during the question and answer portion, you can type your question into the chat box and we can read it out loud and then answer, or you can raise your hand and be called out to speak. So to raise your hand, click on the participants tab on the bottom of the screen. A side column should pop up on the right hand side of your screen. And on the bottom of that right column are three dots. Uh, click on the dots and select raise hand. Once your name is called, you'll be unmuted on our end, but also make sure to unmute yourself on your end. We'll now open it up to Q&A. Jay, are there any questions so far in the chat?
So I don't see any other anything in the chat, and currently I don't see anybody with their hand up. So I will say, I know I, I received um, an email um, or with a, with a comment question. Um, and I believe that individual is here. I have not had a chance to um, email them back, but I just wanted to um, state now that I have a chance to speak to it, that um, the individual asked a question about um, sidewalks and lighting um, being a part of this plan. So I just wanted to clarify that, um, the intent of the comprehensive plan policies and the land development code sets the framework for what, um, you can do. It doesn't speak out individual or specific, um, transportation improvements that will occur. Um, but, uh, any, any, um, transportation facility that leads to a development must provide, um, improvements up to county standard. And also another element of this plan um, that I didn't touch on today because it hasn't necessarily changed from November um, that the consultant is recommending the um, Board of County Commissioners look into a mobility plan for this area. And that would incorporate things like uh, sidewalks and various transportation improvements. So if the board decides to move ahead with that, that would lay out a plan um, for things like sidewalks and other transportation issues in this area. And Mr. Weaver, I see you had your hand up again. Those numbers, the new numbers of one dwelling unit per five acres, uh, at one, one dwelling unit per acre under five acres and two dwelling units for 50 acres or more. I noticed that was a substantial change of about 50 or 75% from previous numbers just the week before. And I did hear some comment at the County Commission. Are those numbers in stone or is this sort of a trial balloon candidate for potential density? Or is there some chance of maybe a plan B going back to the original greater allowed densities with maybe just a few reasonable safeguards on those additional densities discussed the previous 18 months? Yeah, so these are th this is what we have proposed now ahead of the public hearings. You're right, in response to the feedback that we heard from uh, the Board of County Commissioners. Um, so they had some concerns about raising the densities above two dwelling units per acre, which is why we had the change, <clears throat> excuse me, from the three to the two. And then also um, just the general concern about development um, occurring faster than transportation can keep up. Um, and so we figured by increasing that acreage threshold from five to 50 acres, we could kind of better plan for transportation in that way, um, having less uh, kind of segregated communities, if you will. And um, so that was our justification hearing to what the you know, board has to say and responding to it in this proposal. Um, but of course, when we bring this to the public hearings, the planning commission or the board could um, could request us to, ch to change that. Is there any chance that those original densities could be resumed or gone back to uh, if there were a study, for example, of how they enhance the affordable housing mission vis-a-vis -vis the cost of housing versus the density differences the last week or two? So I think using that, um, Justification may be challenging for this area just because affordable housing has not been um, proposed in the RP2, given the lack of transportation access being one of the reasons. Um, but since we don't have any language pertaining to affordable housing in the RP2 um, policies or regulations, it might be difficult to use that as a justification for those densities. But it would be a general affordability of housing, not just the so-called in quotes, affordable housing with the subsidies on 8% median income or whatever. Affordability of housing is how I probably should have worded that. Yeah, Jared or Jay, do you have anything else to, to add? Oh, I, I think that, Marianne, you did a good job. This, this is really coming from direction from the board. We did put the provision of the aggregation as well to, to get up to that 50 acres or greater. But yeah, a lot of this is really coming from kind of the previous conversations we've had with the, the board. 
Right, and uh, Mr. Weaver, thank you for the question. And I thank see you. that Mr. Harwell has his hand raised as well. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. Hear you. Got a question about the uh, TDRs. Uh, have they made a decision about the TDRs um, from rural to the USA? Or are, they, are they still wanting to do from the TDRs from the South Balm to the North Balm? Sure, Marianne, you want me to take this? This is still an ongoing discussion. There's gonna be more coming on the TDRs in the months to come. Right now, that currently what's shown is uh, uh, TDRs from the south area, the bomb area to the, the north village area. So you could could get up to you know, four DUs per acre using uh, the, the TDRs. Okay. I'm glad though that it is, buddy, it is a no net increase within the rural service area. So when those units leave bomb and go to the northern plan village, they're going in a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an existing policy that is in the comprehensive plan today. And so that is carried forward in the, uh, the language that is proposed. I believe we all agree that we would like to see those units be moved from the rural service area into the urban service area as we've done with Waimama. And I believe that in the future, there will be an opportunity for that. But at this time, we don't have a receiving zone within the urban service area for those units out of Balm. That may be something that Jared uh, may be able to speak more of in the coming months. But I think at this time, we don't know where that's going unless Jared says otherwise. No, that was well. Thanks for, for elaborating on that, Jay. That I think you explained it well. Buddy, did you have a follow-up question to that? Yes. Um, question about the uh, question we asked about the, um, the density for um, lakes. Have uh, y'all come up with a decision or an answer on that? I personally have that question out. I'm still working towards that. I don't know if Jared or Marianne have anything other to talk about that. No, I think um, just for reference, you're referring to how wetland density um, credits are um, really defined and what counts as wetland densities. And we had a conversation before um, about does man-made bodies of water count as wetlands or is it just natural? Um, bodies of water. And so that, again, is <clears throat> that wetland density credit um, effort is a separate effort from this. And um, there are kind of other folks leading um, that at, at this time or more involved at this time. And as Jay mentioned, we're still trying to figure out um, some of the details there. But we'll okay. certainly keep you updated when we know more. Okay, thanks. And uh, as far as the uh, affordable housing uh, density, um, you know, until we get the roads improved, the uh, transportation out here, Heartline, um, you know, get some commercial out here, you know, it, we might as well give affordable housing density and put stuff on the moon. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other hands raised right now. Uh, and there's nothing in the chat. Well, I guess if there are no other um, questions or comments at this time, uh, Marianne, do you want to wrap it up unless anybody uh, from the audience has anything else that they would like to mention to us? Comment, question, anything. You just need to raise your hand. Yeah, that's okay. And if anything comes up um, after well, this. Real, real quick, I'm sorry, Marianne. Buddy has his hand raised one more time. Mm -hmm. On the uh, upcoming uh, next week for the planning commission and stuff, uh, is that going to be like an open dialogue like it is now where we can um, call in um, Q&A uh, sessions or with, with Monday and then what, uh, Thursday, there's going to be one with the Board of County Commissions. Uh, can you explain how those are going to work? 
Sure, so those are set up um, like your typical public hearing. Um, so we will be um, seeing both the RP2 and the WBR2 um, amendments for the comprehensive plan and the land development code changes um, go to, you're right, the planning commission on the first and the board of county commissioners on the fourth. And then the public will have a chance to speak um, and have their three minutes each um, on each item. And so um, as mentioned, there are various ways to be able to submit that comment. If you don't wanna speak, you can submit something in writing ahead of time um, that we can submit to a public record. But if you do wanna sign up to speak, um, you can follow the steps here. Um, go to the county's website, navigate to the calendar, select your meeting date, and um, then select speak at the public hearing. So I should mention that on Friday, we also plan on sending out an email to everybody that's on our email list for um, RP2 and WVR2. And we will send links to, um, for folks to be able to sign up to speak during those hearings. So that you don't, if you don't wanna navigate or you, you, um, you know, you can just click on the link in the email instead and it'll take you to that page. Um, but as mentioned, it will be kind of your typical public hearing format. Um, so we'll have our, um, our items, we'll give our presentations and, um, and the commissioners will, will discuss and take, um, and, and take a motion. And you'll also have an opportunity to speak. Is it just gonna be a speaking uh, meeting or is it gonna be a virtual like a Zoom meeting? So I believe, and Jay, correct me if I'm wrong. So the public can participate virtually, um, unfortunately not in person at this time, um, unless there's an area set up for the public to go um, and attend. Jay, you probably know more about that than I do. Um, but I'm not sure if the commissioners will be some in person, like a hybrid, some in person and, and some virtually. I'm assuming that may be the case. Um, so, but at least we will be participating virtually and the public will also have the opportunity to, to participate virtually. You know, the, the hybrid meetings do not allow the public access to the second floor of the BOCC chambers right now. They are in a remote stand, um, sometimes, you know, various libraries. I think it's a library that's off of Nebraska um, around downtown Tampa. Uh, so it, it doesn't, it doesn't allow you the opportunity to actually look face to face in the room with your commissioner. You're going to be doing that in the Zoom platform. It's actually not a Zoom platform. I think they use WebEx, uh, but it would, it would follow the same format just virtually that you would at a normal public hearing when you showed up in person. They will go ahead because you will sign up to speak. They will go ahead and say, is this person or this person here to speak now? You're the next to speak in that sense. Okay, thanks. Um, and I did notice on a couple of the uh, BOCC meetings, um, Commissioner Cohen and Commissioner um, Gwen, the newest county commissioners have commented, you know, they wanted to hear more from the, uh, the citizens and stuff. I mean, th the last couple of uh, meetings that we've had uh, virtual and stuff, I mean, they are recorded. I mean, do they usually, um, go back and review those to see what uh, what we've said on some of those meetings or uh, I mean, they're welcome to come out here and tour Balm and so they can see the roads. And, you know, I think that'd be a great idea. Has that been suggested? So, yeah, um, I can at least speak to the first part of that, buddy, is that um, Commissioner Myers and Commissioner Cohen are on the mailing list uh, that we send out when we have any kind of information to update. So when we have these meetings, such as today's, um, they receive notice that this was occurring. When we update um, our websites with new material, they receive those notices that our uh, website has been updated with new material. So all of that has been put in there. And Commissioner Myers is um, primarily the one who drove us to say, hey, I think you guys need to go out because there have been these changes since November and reconnect with the community. So I believe Commissioner Myers is um, listening with that in mind about uh, making sure that uh, the community is heard. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so if there are no other questions at this time, um, 
as mentioned, that's perfectly fine. We're still here. If you have anything um, that comes up, let me go back to this page um, so you have our info. So if you'd like to contact us, feel free. Again, if you'd like to reach out directly to your commissioner, um, provide them with you know, a voicemail or written comment, feel free to do so. Um, if you just need some more information or clarification, uh, contact us, we'll, we'll try to answer all of your questions. Um, hopefully you can tune in on the first and the fourth. And again, we'll continue to keep everyone updated. If you're not on the email list now and you'd like to be, just shoot me an email and let me know. Um, or you can sign up um, through the project webpage as well, which is listed here in the bottom. So, um, so we hope that this was helpful explaining um, some of the big changes you know, that have occurred since November. Um, again, if there's anything else, just reach out. Um, and we're here uh, to answer any questions you might have. So thank you for taking your time um, and uh, we appreciate everyone being here today. <laughs>